the Dagda, the Allfather, the highest position in many pantheons of deities, is an entity respected and uplifted by the pantheon for their great power and wisdom. Odin, from Norse mythology, and Zeus, from Greek mythology, are two of the most well-known kings of gods, but there have been dozens of them throughout history, including the Dagda. Known as the Great Father and Lord of Great Knowledge, the Dagda is one of the most important deities in Irish mythology. Although much like many other things related to Celtic mythology, we don't have a great deal of info about him. This video will discuss the Dagda, as well as his most well-known artifact, the Dagda's Harp. The Dagda is a member of the Tuatidanan, the ancient pantheon of gods of Ireland. He was a massive man, powerful and wise, capable of both giving life and taking it away. He also had control over the weather and the seasons, and was associated with fertility, masculinity, and magic. While some depictions of the Dagda paint him as a crude and oafish figure, these were likely later additions, and he was originally greatly respected. His title of Allfather is not due to being the literal father of the Pantheon, but more to his role of father figure and protector of the tribe. He wasn't the first king of the Tuatidanan, but he did hold the longest reign of any of their kings. The Dagda was in the possession of a few uniquely powerful artifacts. One of these was a massive club, so large that it normally required eight men to lift, and was moved on wheels. In the Dagda's hands, it could slay nine men with a single blow, but it could just as easily use the magic in the handle to bring things back to life. His second artifact is his tremendous cauldron, said to be bottomless, and could produce an endless amount of food. No man that sat down to eat from it left unsatisfied, and the ladle was big enough to fit two men in it. His most important artifact, however, was his magical harp, made of oak and covered in jewels. The magic within the harp was unparalleled among the gods, and the Dagda was capable of weaving many wonders in its music. The harp was capable of setting the seasons in order, and was capable of preparing his men for battle, causing them to forget their fears, as well as soothing their wounds and troubles after battle. The harp in the hands of the Dagda was a powerful tool, and the Fomorians, the enemies of the Tuatidanan, knew it. During their war with the Fomorians, there was a time when the harp was left unguarded, and so the Fomorians managed to steal it hoping that the Tuatidanan would fall without the magic of the harp. After a group of Fomorians took it, they knew they had to flee far away to prevent the harp from being retaken. So they took their families with them and traveled a distance away, arriving at a deserted castle. They hung the harp on the wall and hoped to return once the war was won. Unfortunately for them, the Tuatidanan drove the Fomorians out of Ireland not long after, and the Dagda soon found the castle. After entering the banquet hall, and before the Fomorians could defend themselves, the Dagda called the harp to him, and it sprang off the wall, killing nine men on its way back to the Dagda's hands. Once it was in his hands, the Dagda played three melodies, one of sorrow, one of joy, and one of sleep. The melody of sorrow caused the women and children to wail out in tears. The joyful melody caused the group to erupt in uncontrollable laughter. And finally, the last melody caused them to collapse in sleep. Other tales of the Dagda and his power are far more incredible, however. One of his exploits involved having an affair with another god's wife, impregnating her in the process. In order to cover up the deed, the Dagda made the sun stand still for nine months, allowing the baby to be born in a single day. This demonstrates the extent of the Dagda's power, with him even possessing control over the flow of time. 
other tidbits of the Dada's larger-than-life persona include the fact that his breakfast required several whole sheep, pigs, and goats, as well as 80 gallons of milk, and he had relations with a number of goddesses, fathering at least half a dozen children. During the last battle against the Fomorians, the Dagda is wounded by a queen of the Fomorians, and later dies due to the injury. The Dagda's name is believed to come from a phrase meaning the good god, not necessarily because he was known for his benevolence, but more so because he was merely good at everything. Despite the comparisons to the Norse god Odin due to his title of Allfather, the Dagda shares just as many similarities with the thunder god, Thor. The Dagda's club, a tremendous weapon capable of both taking lives and restoring them, is not that different from Mjolnir, and a tale of the Dadas features him doing battle with a sea creature, likely an octopus, just as Thor battled with Jormungandr. Both gods had incredible appetites, were not opposed to blunt applications of brute force, and were seen as protectors of their homes. Unfortunately, like most things in Celtic mythology, most of the information about the Dada has been lost or crudely reconstructed, and so the Dagda will remain a curious and unique legend. Hey there, fellow explorers. I don't normally do this, but I'd like to take a moment to uh, talk about our sponsor for this video, which is the History of Vikings podcast. This is run by my man Noah. He's got a number of episodes already up. This is a podcast that goes into, uh, of course, the history of Vikings, the real world history, goes into a lot of their more notable events, famous Viking raids, things like that, but also touches on the more simple aspects of their life, you know, living at home, just the day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, it also goes into Norse mythology here and there, their religion, what they believed. Um, the man definitely knows his stuff, very professional output, and he also brings in a lot of leading experts, like I'm talking real professors on medieval history, Vikings, Norse, things like that. It's all very well done. Uh, so if you're into any of that, I know this is a Celtic mythology video, but if you're into the sort of ancient European history and uh, these old mythologies, stuff like that, check out the History of Vikings podcast. You can find links to the iTunes uh, place as well as a Stitcher link, however you listen to podcasts. Check it out in the description. Very professional stuff.